All right, so good morning everyone. So welcome back to our hematology class for today. So we're actually finally gonna discuss the last topic for the semifinals, which we'll be talking about um, porphyria, sideroblastic anemia, and hemoglobinopathy. Please do remember that um, I will be skipping the intrinsic and extrinsic um, causes leading to destruction of RBC or hemolysis or what we call hemolysis. So that will be now part of the final examination. So for today, we're going to talk about porphyria, sideroblastic anemia, and the different hemoglobinopathies. So let's get started with our discussion for today. So the first one is all about sideroblastic anemia. So sideroblastic anemia is actually characterized to be an interference in the production of your protoporphyrin ring. So remember that your protoporphyrin ring is part uh, is a major um, it is a major component in your heme synthesis or your heme production. So sideroblastic anemia causes your microcytic and hypochromic anemia and sideroblastic anemia is said to have a hallmark um, a hallmark symptom or a hallmark mark, a hallmark of um, ring sideroblast. So your, your ring sideroblast is characterized by the deposition of your iron, okay? The deposition of your iron in your, um, in your precursor cells, in your bone marrow, causing now your ring sideroblast. So let us just try to, I don't know, let's just try to differentiate. In sideroblastic anemia kasi, in sideroblastic anemia, um, I would try to compare it with your iron deficiency anemia, okay? In your iron deficiency anemia, I hope you still remember, in your iron deficiency anemia, we did talk about of your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin. Your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin or your FEP is said to be increased in iron deficiency anemia. Bakit po ganun, sir? Kasi nga, marami kang protoporphyrin ring, okay? Pero wala kang iron to bind with them to form your heme. Okay, that is why in your iron deficiency anemia, there is a deposition of excess, protoporph excess protoporphyrin. Okay, those excess protoporphyrin now um, are detected using FEP. Okay, using FEP. Sir, why are you trying to compare your the iron deficiency anemia with regards to sideroblastic anemia? Okay, dahil sa kaso ni sideroblastic anemia, the problem this time is that you have enough iron reserve, you have enough iron inside your body, but the problem this time is that there are no enough protoporphyrin to bind this time on your iron. Nakukuha, this time sa sideroblastic anemia, ang kulang naman natin is yung ating protoporphyrin ring or yung protoporphyrin 9 natin. That is why walang mag walang um, walang magko-combine with your ferrous iron to form your heme. And in that case, okay, and, and in that case, okay, the deposition now of those excess, okay, the deposition now of those excess iron in your mitochondria for, will now lead in the formation of your sideroblastic cells or rather your ring sideroblast, okay? Your ring Sideroblast. So your ring sideroblast is the deposition of those iron on your mitochondria, okay? On your mitochondria. And maybe some of you would be wondering, sir, what is now the difference between your sideroblastic anemia, your hemochromatosis, and your hemosiderosis? They are different, okay? Because in sideroblastic anemia, there is no iron overload, okay? Wala tayong iron overload in sideroblastic anemia. It's just that the iron that is supposedly to be used, okay, that is supposedly to be used um, in the production of your heme, okay, eventually your hemoglobin was not um, was not used. That's why it it was it accumulated in your um, it accumulated on your mitochondria. And did you know that sideroblastic anemia are usually acquired, okay? Are usually acquired. And one of the leading cause of acquired sideroblastic anemia is your lead poisoning. So you all know your lead poisoning or your plumbism in your um, RBC anomalies. You did mention about um, lead poisoning co causing your basophilic stippling, correct? 
causing your basophilic st- basophilic stippling. So your it causes basophilic stippling because it hi- inhibits a enzyme that clear out your RNA remnants. Okay, your RNA remnants, but it's just more than the the enzyme that is being inhibited there. Aside from that enzyme, it also inhibits key enzymes in the production of your heme, okay? In the production of your heme. Ergo, um, when um, lead poisoning or plumbism is uh, is happening, you would also um, expect that there will be an interference in the production of your proto-porphyrin ring. And how does your lead affects, okay? How does your lead affects your your um, protoporphyrin. So your lead interferes in two ways. And in these two ways, it affects the two major, okay, the two major processes in your heme synthesis. And what are those? This is the conversion of your amino levolinic acid or your L- ALA into becoming your pro- porphobilinogen or your PPG. So it inhibits your ALA dehydratase or your PBG synthase, okay? So this results now into the accumulation of your amino levolinic acid. In addition to that, um, your lead also interfered it, the, the process of incorporating your ferrous iron into your protoporphyrin 9, okay? And in this case, the enzyme being inhibited is your ferrochelatase or your heme synthase which then result in the accumulation of iron and protoporphyrin in the mitochondria, okay? Um, accumulation of iron and protoporphyrin ring in your mitochondria, thereby leading in the formation of your ring, sideroblast. So again, for one more one more time, okay? One more time, your lead interferes your ELA dehydratase or your PBG synthase, and it also interferes your ferrochelatase and your heme synthase. So, lagi niyong tatandaan, like what I always say, kapag yung enzyme is inhibited, there will be an accumulation of its substrate. So, in this case, dahil wala ng ALA dehydratase or D- P- uh, PBG synthase, tataas si, amino- si, tataas si ala, bababa, si porpo, porpo, bilinogen. At the same time, in this case, tataas naman din si um, protoporphyrin 9 at bababa yung formation ng ating heme. And dahil mababa ang formation ng iyong heme, walang mapuproduce na hemoglobin, thereby causing now your sideroblastic anemia, which is a microcytic hypochromic anemia. Okay? One thing that is also very much associated with sideroblastic anemia is your porphyria. Porphyria, on the other hand, is more on the hereditary condition that impairs your heme synthesis. Okay? It, your, impair your heme synthesis or impair your protoporphyrin production. That is why we call it porphyria. So porphyria is the accumulation and depos- is the d- deposition of porphyrin in your hepatocytes, okay? In your hepatocytes and even in your cells. That is the reason why accumulation of your uh, accumulation or leakage of your um, porphyrin, okay? Um, accumulation, okay? Accumulation um, of your porphyrin eh, will now lead to the leak of porphyrin into your cells as they age and die. And this can also be excreted in your urine and feces. By the way, this porphyrin that are accumulated in your body, okay, or in your body tissue would also cause um, fluorescence in your fluorescence in some of the um, body parts that are um, being deposited with porphyrin. In, for example, your teeth and your bone will fluoresce because of porphyria, okay? So, luminous yung ngipin mo. Imagine that, okay? Luminous yung ngipin mo. At the same time, okay, at the same time, um, psychosis, okay? Psychosis is also a very prominent clinical feature, or, um, especially um, during the um, during the past century, which were seen in intermarrying European monarchy um, in Europe before. So, nakikita, nakikita si psychosis. So, in addition to that, because of the deposition of your porphy- porphyrins now in your 
uh, the deposition of your porphyrin tau in your skin, this can also lead photosensitivity and expo uh, when exposed when exposed to sunlight. Okay, when exposed to sunlight. So your porphyria can come into three different forms, which are all hereditary by nature. Which these are your congenital erythropoietic porphyria, or so known as your Gunther's disease, your erythropoietic protoporphyria, and your X-linked erythropoietic protoporphyria. So all of this um, would actually show photosensitivity. This is normocytic, normochromic. This would uh, this would cause a mild anemia, and this would cause a mild microcytic hypochromic anemia. So all of these three, okay, all of these three are different from one another because of the enzyme that is deficient. So in here, the one defic deficient is your uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase. This one, that the, there is a deficiency in your ferrochelatase or your heme synthase. And here, there is a uh, deficiency in your ALA synthase, okay? ALA synthase. And if you would um, actually notice, no, if you would actually notice, porphyria is actually... The ano, perfume is actually the the cause or the reason of your folklore about your vampires. Okay, your folklore about your vampires because they are photosensitive, and some of them have psychosis. Okay, some of them have psychosis. So also in in night, de ba? Dahil nagflores yung teeth yung teeth nila. So you would really see that this um that these patients are actually the one okay na that na dub to ha, to um as to being vampires okay sila yung mga tinatawag na vampires during that time but in reality now we all know that that it's actually not vampires but actually porphyria okay or yeah that is actually just your porphyria so please do remember that okay please do remember that so moving forward let's go on now to your hemoglobinopathies, okay? To your hemoglobinopathy. So hemoglobinopathies refers to the disease states involving now your hemoglobin molecule. Kanina, we just talked about um, heme. Kung mapapansin niyo yung progression ng pagdidiscuss ko sa inyo, last time we, we talked about iron deficiency anemia. So may problem siya sa iron. Ngayon naman may problem tayo sa heme, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng sideroblastic anemia and even your porphyria. Now, the problem is the hemoglobin itself. So, hemoglobinopathy refers to the disease state involving your hemoglobin molecule. So, hemoglobinopathies are the most common genetic disease approximate, affecting approximately 7% of the world's population. Okay? The world's population. So, for this morning, I will only be discussing about hemoglobinopathies, but it is just rightful for me to differentiate hemoglobinopathies and your thalassemia. Okay? Kasi baka nagkakaroon kayo ng, ng, ng baka in, in later on, you'd actually be confused with these two terms. To be specific, thalassemia is actually considered to be an a hemoglobinopathy as well. Okay? It is also a hemoglobinopathy. Okay? But the, pro, the, the difference between hemoglobin, uh, the difference why may hiwalay tayo na thalassemia is because Qualitative hemoglobinopathies are called your structural defect hemoglobinopathies, okay? Your structural defect hemoglobinopathies. So this is due to altered amino acid sequence. So dahil may mutation sa DNA natin, kapag ito ay na-translate into becoming your protein or your, yeah, becoming your amino acid or your, your protein, there will now be alteration in the amino acid sequence. This altered struct, this altered amino acid sequence would cause now alteration in their structure, causing now structural defect, and okay, and alteration and in, in their function. That's why we call this collectively as your qualitative hemoglobinopathies. Okay, may problema sa quality pero tama lang yung production. Unlike your thalassemia, your thalassemia. Is characterized to have a reduced rate of hemoglobin synthesis. That's why it is your quantitative hemoglobinopathies. Okay? Your quantitative hemoglobinopathies. Nakukuha. So, thalassemia. Okay? Thalassemia. Normal yung, yung structure. Normal yung function. It's just that 
depleted yung production. Okay? Depleted yung production o hindi mababa yung production ng ganitong type ng um, sa ganitong type ng hemoglobinopathies. Okay? The um, two types of hemoglobinopathies. I hope those two are clear ha. So qualitative and your type your, pag ang problema is sa quality ng hemoglo ng 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 hemoglobin we call it your structural defect or qualitative um, hemoglobinopathies. But if it is your quantitative now, the quantity of hemoglobin is uh, is the one depleted, we call it thalassemia. Okay? Thalassemia. So before we go deeper into the different hemoglobinopathies, which I will be discussing today, specifically the variant hemoglobins, before I go there, um, let us have some quick review first, Okay? So, tatandaan sa thalassemia, um, we will be going back to thalassemia together with your intrinsic and, and extrinsic um, defects um, causing hemo hemolysis in the finals. But now, let's have a review. So, this is a structure of, okay? Structure of hemoglobin, uh, he structures of globin genes. So, you all remember that we have six, okay? We have six, your alpha. Your, we have your six. So the chromosome 16 codes for your alpha and your zeta. You can find there your alpha and your zeta genes on chromosome 16. And then you can also see your beta, gamma, delta, epsilon on your chromosome 11. Okay? On your chromosome 11. And did you know that chromosome 16, okay, uh, chromosome 16, code for alpha and zeta. Alpha and zeta are collectively known as your alpha-like genes. Okay? Your alpha-like genes. And your chromosome 11, your beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, collectively, these four are called your beta-like genes. Okay? Your beta-like genes. So I want you to remember alpha-like genes and beta-like genes because this will be important. These are foundational when we go to your thalassemia. Okay, kasi kung ewan ko, if you did have your your advanced reading, you would now know that there are two types of thalassemia, your alpha and your beta thalassemia, and that is related to these two. Okay? So moving forward, uh, maybe some of you are wondering, sir, paano po nangyari yun, no? Uh, remember that in your, remember that in your, uh, fetal hemo your fetal hemoglobins, you have your goer 1, your goer 2, your port land, and you have your hemoglobin F. But some of you would be wondering, Sir, paano po nangyari yun na from, from gamma, okay, from gamma, naging beta na yung production, okay? From gamma, which is in your goer 1, di ba, alpha and gamma, okay, in your goer 1, naging alpha and beta, now becoming your hemoglobin A, which is your adult hemoglobin. So that is because of your BCL11A and your cruple like factor 1 and your zinc finger transcriptional receptor. These are necessary um, substances that silence your gamma globulin, okay, your gamma, glo your gamma globin gene and are part of a complex mechanism involved in your gamma beta switching. So they turn off your gamma gene, okay? They're, they turn off their gamma gene and turns on, okay? Turns on your beta gene. That's why from producing goer 1, magiging production na tayo ng hemoglobin A, okay? Hemoglobin A. So that is just one thing that I want you to know. So remember that these genes, okay, that these genes can actually undergo mutation, they can have genetic mutation causing now different hemoglobinopathies, okay? Different hemoglobinopathies. And we have four, uh, four ways on how genetic mutation would occur in your hemoglobinopathies, okay? Would occur in your hemoglobinopathies. We have your point mutation. We have deletion insertion. We also have your chain, your fusion, and in some cases, your chain extension, so let's go to the first one, which is your point mutation. Your point mutation is actually the most common genetic mutation occurring in hemoglobinopathies. So in point mutation, there is a replacement of a nucleotide with a different nucleotide. Okay? So kunwari, di ba? Yung AAA natin na, na codon, 
one of the one of the nucleotide there will be uh, will be substituted take for example magiging aga na lang siya aga okay magiging aga na lang yung iyong magiging aga na lang yung iyong um nucleot yung codon mo so what i'm trying to say here is that there's a point mutation only so meaning to say may mapapalitan na nucleotide so kunwari from uh take for example we have here your we do have here diba we do have the here your a take for example meron kang agt okay meron kang aga okay meron kang aga so yung aga mo will now be mutated into becoming what they will now be mutated into your a sabihin na natin a u a mag mutate siya to AUA, AUA mo. Take for example, ganyan. So, mapapalitan yung G ng, ng U. So, in that case, okay, there will now, we will now have your, we will have now have your point mutation. But the thing about point mutation is that continue pa rin yung reading frame. And when I say reading frame, the translation or the, the translation still continues. Okay, so review your central dogma, ha? Res trans uh, replication, transcription, and the translation in the reading frame, it, it still continues. So meaning to say, may mapuproduce pa rin na, may mapuproduce pa rin na globin or may mapuproduce pa rin na protein. It's just that it's, it will now be a defective, um, a defective hemoglobin dahil sa um, iba na nga yung nucleotide na naipasok, Okay. Iba na nga yung nucleotide na naipasok. Therefore, iba rin yung amino acid na na-produce after translation. So that is for your point mutation. In deletion and insertion, um, in deletion, there is a removal of one or more nucleotide. In insertion, there is a addition of one or more nucleotide. Um, and in this case, meron tayong disrupted na reading frame. At kapag disrupted yung reading frame mo, that will now cause your quantitative hemoglobinopathy or your thalassemia. Okay, nakukuha. So, madalas, kap ang ating hemoglobinopathies are actually point mutation and our de uh, deletion, deletion, to be specific, causes your thalassemia. Okay? Bakit po thalassemia, sir? Kasi instead, ito kasi nagko-continue. So, ibig sabihin, nakakapag-produce ka pa rin ng globin. Abnormal man yung globin mo, nakakapag-produce ka pa rin, may hemoglobin pa din na napoproduce. Okay? Defective nga lang. In deletion, dahil mali or dahil kulang na yung, yung nucleotide mo sa codon, anong nangyayari? Ang nangyayari, hindi na nakakapag-produce, hindi na tayo nakakapag-produce ng, ng globin, therefore, wala ding enough hemoglobin. So, nakukuha yung difference between point mutation and deletion. If you have other questions, I will be entertaining them by the end of our discussion. So, having said that, we also have your chain extension. Chain extension, will I'll just discuss it briefly. So, in chain extension, um, this occur when the stop codon is mutated. So, remember, di ba, meron tayong stop codon, your, your, um, your uga, uwa, uwag, okay? Your... Uga, uwag, okay? So, those are actually my, my palatandaan for your stop cotton. We have your, um, we have your uga, okay? We have your uwa, and we also have your, um, uwag, okay? So, those are your stop cotton, UGA, UAA, and UAG. Those are your stop codon. So, anong nangyari sa chain extension? Nagmutate yung stop codon. So, parang sira yung, sabi na natin sira yung stoplight. So, hindi tumigil yung mga sasakyan. Ang nangyari, nagtuloy-tuloy yung mga sasakyan all the way. Dahil wala nga ang stoplight, ganun din sa translation. Walang stop codon, kaya tuloy-tuloy lang siya. Pag-translate, nagkakaroon tayo ng longer na amino acid chain. Okay we have a longer amino acid chain compared to the usual. Okay? Yun naman yung nangyayari sa chain extension. In your fusion, there is a gene fusion. Gene fusions occur when two normal genes break between nucleotides, switch position, and then they anneal to the opposite gene. So that is now pure fusion. 
So these are just two of the genetic mutation. But what I want you to remember, guys, are these two. Your point mutation and the deletion and insertion. Okay? Talk, since we are talking about um, genetic mutation, it's also rightful for us to talk about zygosity. Okay? In zygosity, this refers to the association between the number of gene mutation and the level of severity of the resultant genetic defect. So, anong ibig sabihin natin dito, sir? Okay? Zygosity re refers to the kung ilang gene, okay, the number of gene that is mutated. Because the number of gene mutated would directly affect, okay, would directly affect the, sem the severity of your symptoms, okay? The sever se severity of your symptoms. So, always do remember, okay, always do remember that your globin chains, okay, your globin genes are actually, they, they, they came from, from your mother and your father. So one, one, glo, one, globin, che, one globin gene, rather, from your mother and one globin gene from your father, okay? So if both, okay, if both of those genes, okay, coming from your mom and your dad are both mutated, okay, if they are both mutated, Example lang natin yung beta gene. Kung nare, meron tang beta gene. Both your beta genes are actually mutated. Then we call it homozygous. Homozygous. Um, homo, we call that homozygous. Kapag naman isang gene lang yung abnormal or mutated, take for example, yung sa mom mo lang or sa father, heterozygous ang tawag natin doon. Heterozygous if one gene is only mutated. Uh, if both the gene, okay, your mother's and your father's gene are both mutated, we call them homozygous. Okay? Anong relation ng heterozygosity and homozygosity pagdating sa severity ng symptoms at ng disease? Homozygous, we call it the disease. So this is the full-blown disease um, in particular. Uh, kapag heterozygous naman, there is a trait. This will now be um, characterized by a mild, sometimes asymptomatic pa nga na condition. What um, in some cases your your patients with your with your um, take for example your hemoglobinopathy trait are eventually just carrier. Lalo na kapag asymptomatic naman sila, carrier lang sila ng uh, mutated gene. So. Moving forward, dahil nasabi ko na rin naman yan, okay, hopefully clear tayo dyan, we have now different hemoglobin variants, okay? We have we have your hemoglobin S, C, C, Harlem, E, O, Arab, D, Punjab, G, and your G, Philadelphia. So all of this we will be discussing today. So why are, why do we have, why do I have this yellow, this different coding? So hemoglobin S is actually the most common and the most severe, your hemoglobin C is the second most common, hemoglobin E is the second most common hemoglobin variant, okay? Your C, your S, C, E are the most common, most common C, S, second C, C, tapos C, E. Most severe, severe, S, 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 severe, okay? So, let's discuss now your hemoglobin variant. But before that, okay, let's... Distress, okay? So inhale. <coughs> Hold, okay, for one last time. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. All right, let's start our um, discussion about variant hemoglobins, okay? Variant hemoglobins. Now, we are actually transversing your hemoglobinopathies. Ito na yung iba't ibang hemoglobinopathies natin. And remember, in hemoglobinopathies, there is a problem in the quality of your hemoglobin that is brought about by your point mutation, okay? By your point mutation. So your hemoglobin, your Hemoglobinopathies can either be a hemoglobin a disease or just a trait. 
Okay? A disease or a trait. Depending on the zygosity of your gene. So, before we move forward into those specific hemoglobin variants, let us talk about how can we differentiate one from the other. Okay? How can we differentiate one from the other? So, there are actually um, two major tests. One is your screening and the other one is your confirmatory test. Okay? So, they can be differentiated by their solubility test. This is your screening test. And in your solubility test, we will be discussing two methods later, which are your sodium dithionite and your sodium bet metabisulfite test. Okay? Next is we also have your mobility in, their, in the electrophoretic field, which is the diagnostic test. Okay? In the diagnostic test, we are using your electrophoresis. Okay? We are using your electrophoresis. And in this case, we are using two. Your cellulose acetate, which is 8.4 to 8.6. We also call it your alkaline or your alkaline electrophoresis. And we also have your citrate electrophoresis, which is your acidic electrophoresis that has a pH of 6.0 to 6.2. Okay, 6.0 to 6.2. So, but first one... Let's talk about your sodium dithionate test. Your sodium dithionate test is a solubility test. Sir, bakit po kailangan natin ng solubility test? Solubility test is to detect the solubility, obviously, of your hemoglobin. Originally, your hemoglobin are soluble in your plasma. But in cases of um, hemoglobinopathy, some hemoglobins are actually insoluble in your... Some are actually insoluble. So, for your screening test, we have your sodium dithionite or your sodium hydrosulfite tube test. Okay, this is a tube test. So, this is a screening test for the detection of your cycling hemoglobin. So, most especially, kung mapapansin ninyo by this time, we are talking about hemoglobin S or your sickle cell anemia. So, your hemoglobin S is actually the most severe. That's why that is what we are trying to detect. So, um, your hemoglobin S or your in your sickle cell anemia, there is actually a formation of your sickle, um, sickle cell or sickle hemoglobin. Alam niyo yung sickle, yung sickle na pang pang linis ng mga damo, yung hawak ni kamatayan, okay? That is a sickle shape. Yun yung sickle, okay? So in your your RBC, de ba? Remember your RBC is a discoid, biconcave, shabay shape. But in your sickle cell anemia, in the presence of your hemoglobin S, it becomes now sickle shape. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na sickle cell anemia. Okay? And what is present in sickle cell anemia is your hemoglobin S. Hemoglobin S. So, again, in your sodium dithionate, this is a screening test detecting your sickling hemoglobin, which is your hemoglobin S seen in your sickle cell anemia. Your sodium dithionite is actually not specific. So, what we do here is first, we lyse the cell to liberate the hemoglobin. Okay? So, to, li to liberate the hemoglobin. So, once that the red blood cells are lysed using your saponin, you add now your sodium dithionite. Your sodium dithionite binds and remove your oxygen from the test environment. So, once the oxygen is removed... Okay, cycling will happen. Okay, cycling will happen. And what what will um happen next upon the removal of your oxygen? Your hemoglobin S will start to polymerize, which is a result of the oxygenate uh the oxygenated state, and will now form a precipitate in a high molarity phosphate buffer solution. The precipitate consists of attactoids, which are um RA liquid crystals. Okay, which are RA liquid crystals. These tactoids refract and they deflect light that makes now the solution turbid. So the positive result for your sodium dithionate test is actually a positive turbidity. Kapag naging turbid yung solution after the addition of your sodium dithionate, it is a positive positive um positive result for your sickling anemia or your sickling cells. Okay? Sickling cells. Mamaya, um, just hold on to your horses. 
um, it will all come to realization later on. Okay? Next one, we also have your sodium metabisulfate. Okay? Your sodium metabisulfate naman is actually a, uh, a, is done in your glass slide. So what you do is you add your blood, okay, and you add 2% sodium metabisulfite, which is a reducing agent. What happened here, dahil nga may reducing agent ka, it will now, um, it will now consume the oxygen. There will be um, a deoxygenated state, thereby your hemoglobin S now will cause the formation of your sickle cell. And then you will now look into it under your microscope, under your microscope, and there will be now a formation of your sickle cell, okay? A formation of your sickle cell. So sickle cells, um, or how will leaf positive, how will leaf appearance will now cause a positive result. So kapag normal lang yung RBC or pag slightly crenated sila, negative sila. So meaning to say, there are no hemoglobin S in the um in the in the blood. Pero kapag nagkaroon ka ng sickle cell formation in the form of your sickle cell or your Howell leaves Howell leaf formation, okay, Howell leaf appearance, this is now a positive result for your 2% sodium metabisulfite test. Um, ergo, you have your hemoglobin S in them. Okay? You have your hemoglobin S with them. So I hope I'm making sense, no? So we have two, your sodium dithionite and your sodium metabisulfite test. So if we're gonna just summarize it, it's it is both our screening tests um, checking the presence of your hemoglobin S, okay? Both our screening tests in the uh, detecting or trying to screen if there is a presence of your hemoglobin S, okay? Hemoglobin S. So how do we confirm it or how do we diagnose it eventually? So we have here your confirmatory tests, which are your electrophoresis. So the mobility in the electrophoretic field will now differentiate your hemoglobins, okay? So we have here, okay, we have your hemoglobin molecules have a net negative charge, okay, in your alkaline pH. That's why all of them will now try to migrate in your anode or your positively charged um, electrode. So... At cellulose acetate, which is your alkaline electrophoresis at 8.4 to 8.6, the fastest is your hemoglobin H, hemoglobin I. The slowest your, is your C, E, O, and your hemoglobin A2. Kung mapapansin ninyo, there are hemoglobin variants here. But what I want to highlight is your the band where hemoglobin S, G, and D are all together, okay, are all together. Generally, this, the other types of hemoglobin variants are um, generally mild, okay? Most of them are generally mild. The most severe or the the highlight talaga ng ating hemoglobin is for today will be your hemoglobin S. Your hemoglobin S, which, is a, which leads now to your sickle cell anemia. And kung mapapansin ninyo, sabi mo sir, confirmatory test. Diba, turo mo sa amin sa, sa clinical chemistry that the confirmatory test should be specific. But in this case, hindi ko mahahanap si hemoglobin S. Bakit? Kasi si hemoglobin S, kasama niya si G at D. Anong itsura niyan? Kapag nakita mo sa electrophoretic pattern, magkakasama sila. So hindi mo alam kung yung nag-migrate yung nag dito ay S ba? Hemoglobin S ba? Hemoglobin D ba? Or hemoglobin G? Or hemoglobin Lepore? So, hindi ko po alam, sir, kung anong hemoglobin yung nandyan. Sabi nyo, confirmatory test. Paano ko ngayon confirm na may hemoglobin S dyan? Doon ngayon papasok yung ating, okay, da, dito gamit natin si cellulose acetate, correct? Dito ngayon papasok yung ating citrate agar hemoglobin electrophoresis which is your acid electrophoresis. And in this case, your citrate agar is used as a complement. Okay, remember, it is used as a complement to cellulose acetate electrophoresis. Sir, pag sinabing complement, gagawin mo lang to in complementary, hindi to replacement. Okay, hindi ito replacement. So it differentiates your hemoglobin variant that migrate together. And what are those, okay, hemoglobin variant that migrate together. These are your S, 
D, G, and Lepore. All of these are hemoglobin variant. But what you're trying to look for is your hemoglobin S kasi siya yung most severe. Kasi siya yung magkakos ng sakit at siya yung magkakos ng complication. Siya yung magkakos ng sickle cell anemia sa iyong pasyente. And that's what we we're trying to look for. And what is what are we going to use? We're going to use your citrate agar hemoglobin electrophoresis as a complementary test in your um uh, as a complementary taste in your cellulose acetate electrophoresis. So your um, your citrate agar hemoglobin electrophoresis, once again, is used to differentiate your hemoglobin S from D and G. Hemoglobin S from D and G. So ano, bakit po siya tinawag na complementary? Kasi una mo munang gagawin sa cellulose acetate. You will now first do your cellulose acetate electrophoresis first. And then kapag nakita mo na merong abnormal band, okay? Kung makikita mo, sir, paano mo naman nasabing abnormal? Because these are the normal, um, yan, patient, um, this is the control. Ayan, um, control sa 1, patient 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 10 are all normal. Pero meron kang pasyente na merong band dito, which you know are band for SD. G and Lapore. Pero hindi mo nga alam kung SDG or Lapore ba yan. Kaya ang gagawin mo is your citric agar hemoglobin electrophoresis. And this is what um, will differentiate them. In cellulose acetate, mapapansin nyo, SDG, pare-parehas silang nandun sa isang band. But here, okay, in your citrate agar, remember that the the application point, the application well is in the middle, okay? Application point is in the middle. So you have the anode and you have the elect the you have the anode and you have the cathode, okay? Your hemoglobin ang goal natin mahiwalay si SDG kay mahiwalay si S kay DG. Okay? So take for example, nag-apply ka dito ng ano. So yung makikita mo normal, walang mga ano. So Paano po natin ma-differentiate? Okay, paano natin ma-differentiate? You will now be able to differentiate it by um, their mobility pattern. Okay, ma-differentiate mo si C at S dahil mas mabilis si C, mas mabagal si S. Pero mas ma-differentiate mo naman ang goal nga natin ma-differentiate si S at si D and G. Kung mapapansin ninyo, hemoglobin D, hemoglobin G, all migrated to the cathode. Okay, they migrated in the cathode. Hemoglobin S migrated in the anode. So, having said that now, you will now start to confirm or you will now um you will now we you will be able now to classify or identify hemoglobin S in your citrate agar electrophoresis because your hemoglobin S will migrate in the anode versus your hemoglobin D and your hemoglobin G that will migrate in the cathode. Nagigets ba ako? Okay? Yung hemoglobin S mo, na, na differentiate mo ngayon siya kay D at G kasi si S pumunta sa anode, si D at G pumunta sa cathode. Okay? Na hindi mo ma-identify kapag cellulose acetate. Kasi all of them will be migrating, okay? All of them will me will be migrating in your anode. Okay? All of them um all of them rather all of them will be migrating in your cathode, okay? So dito sa cathode sila nag-migrate kasi negatively charged. So pare-pareha sila ng position dito. Dito, nahiwalay mo na si S at nahiwalay mo na si D at si G. Okay? So, again, alam ko medyo nakakaano. So, inhale. So, let's try to um, ponder upon all the things that um, have been said and done. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale, hold, and now let's move on to the different hemoglobin variants that we are going to talk 
about. Okay? So, the first one, sabi nga natin, is your hemoglobin S. Kung mapapansin ninyo, inunan ni Sir Joms ngayon yung ating mga, uh, we actually discussed first the diagnostic test, like your um, sodium uh, metabisulfite, your sodium dithionite test, and then your confirm your electrophoresis test for you to be able to differentiate the other hemoglobin variants, okay? The other hemoglobin variants. Why did I did that? Because we will now try to differentiate the different hemoglobin variants based on their solubility and their electrophoretic pattern. So alam nyo na na si S, D, at G sama-sama sa iisa kapag cellulose acetate. Kaya kailangan mo ng complementary test which is your acid si your citrate um, agar electrophoresis which will now differentiate your hemoglobin S from its um, from hemoglobin D and G. So let's start with hemoglobin S. Okay? So we all know that hemoglobin S causes your hemoglobin your sickle cell disease or your sickle cell anemia or your sickle cell trait. Mamaya pag-uusapan natin 'yan. So hemoglobin S has a structural defect. Okay? So there is a uh, mutation in your beta globin, okay, in the beta gene, which where your um, there is a mutation in your beta globin chain at the at position six, glutamic acid, which was which was now replaced with your valine, okay, which was um, replaced by your valine. Ano pong nangyari? Yung glutamic acid mo na palitan ng valine, okay. So remember that in a normal beta chain, ganito yung itsura niya, um, GAG for your glutamic acid. In your um, sickle beta chain, ang nangyari, napalitan ng D, ng T. Um, in, in a sense, nagkaroon tayo ng point mutation. And that point mutation caused now a structural defect. Dahil sa, um, instead na glutamic acid yung um, nandun sa position 6, naging valine siya. Okay? Naging valine. So, hemoglobin solubility test, this is, a, they have a positive result. So, I think positive result, the one on your right, the one on uh, with my laser, and the one here is a negative. Um, a negative result for your solubility test. Pag sinabi kong solubility test, this one, dahil nasa test tube siya, this is your sodium dithionite test. Metabisulfite, pag nasa, uh, nasa glass slide. Okay? Nasa glass slide. So again, remember this, guys, ha? Huh? Remember this, guys. So again, your hemoglobin S both migrate in your cellulose acetate with your S, D, and G. But we can separate that using your acid, um, your acid citrate, okay? Your acid citrate. So again, in hemoglobin S, we have a mutation in beta-globin. Ganito natin siya babasahin. There's a mutation in the beta-globin chain whereby at position 6, your glutamic acid was replaced by your valine. So, that this will now cause your sickle cell anemia. Ano ba yung sickle cell anemia? Okay? Your sickle cell anemia can, um, if it is a, um, if it is homozygous, we will now call it a sickle cell anemia. But if it is just a trait, meaning to say, um, minor lang yung symptoms or mild lang yung symptoms in your patient, we have now your sickle cell trait, okay? Your sickle cell trait. And this, um, under your sodium metabisulfite test, this is how your, um, your sickle cell will look like. So these are your hemoglobin, um, these are your sickle cell, okay? These are hemog, these are red blood cells that contains your, that contains your um, hemoglobin S. Sir, bakit po sila naging ganyan? Again, because of your, because, um, because of your valine, okay? Because of your valine, there is a structural changes kapag walang oxygen yung environment. Kapag walang oxygen na hawak yung mga cell na yan, nagiging ganyan sila. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, these are your sickle cells. Okay? These are your sickle cell. And the problem with your sickle cell, okay, bakit ba kasi galit na galit ka sa sickle cell, sir? Okay? Bakit ba galit na galit ka sa sickle cell, sir? Your sickle cell anemia, so remember, di ba, the, um, the discoid shape of your RBC 
gives it deformability, okay? Deformability that enables it to pass through, okay? To pass through small capillaries. Anong nangyayari kapag sickle cell? Kapag sickle cell, they cannot um, deform, okay? They cannot, um, they cannot deform themselves to pass through the the vessel ang nangyayari nag-accumulate sila diyan okay nag-accumulate sila diyan at dahil nag-accumulate sila diyan hindi sila nagfo-flow okay nagbabara yung blood vessels natin okay so this happens kapag walang oxygen so meaning to say sir kapag na oxygenate ulit sila babalik sila sa dati yes okay so kapag na oxygenate ulit sila babalik sila sa dati okay So by the way, um nice thing to know, pakisulat na lang po sa inyong uh, pakisulat sa inyong mga notes that your patient with sickle cell are actually immune to plasmodium falciparum, okay? They are uh, they are actually immune to plasmodium falciparum. Wala kang plasmodium falciparum, meron ka namang hemoglobin S. So mamili ka na lang, okay? So of course, okay? The R, your RBC um, in hemoglobin S are characterized to have sickle cell. You can also see target cell event, um, every now and then. Since this is anemia, you would um, eventually see nucleated RBC. There, uh, there is also cases of polychromasia. Bakit po may polychromasia, sir? Dahil nga po, may, bakit po may polychromasia? Because it is a type of anemia. So your body would try to um, produce or release reticulocytes earlier, okay? So, please remember that in sickle cell anemia, the hallmark feature, okay, the hallmark feature of hemoglobin S is vaso occlusion or vaso, vaso occlusion, pagbabara ng inyong mga ugat, kaugat-ugatan, okay? So, this is spe specifically seen in your capillaries, Okay? This is seen in your capillaries. There are also episodes of recurring pain, which collectively we call it crisis. Okay? There's also um, anemia. Okay? There are anemia. And patients with sickle cell anemia are actually much prone to bacterial infections such um, caused by S. aureus, your strep pneumonia, and your hemophilus influenzae. Okay? Your hemophilus influenzae. So those are the common bacterial ano bacterial um bacterial infections seen in hemoglobin S. So hemoglobin S doesn't just cause anemia, but there are also other complications brought about by your sickle cell anemia. Again, sickle cell anemia because of the presence of your hemoglobin S. There's hemoglobin S because there is a mutation in your beta beta chain at position 6 whereby your glutamic acid is replaced by your valein okay so that is for your hemoglobin s i know um, um we're nearing the 1 r mark so i'll go straight with hemoglobin c the rest of the hemoglobin are now just easier to remember uh, because we're just we're just going to talk about the point mutation that happened and their solubility characteristic okay So for your hemoglobin C, okay, your hemoglobin C, um, there's a structural defect again in your beta, beta globin chain, and this time it's, it's still your uh, in at position six, okay, at position six, whereby your glutamic acid this time is now um, replaced by your lysine. Kanina, glutamic to valine, that is sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin S. Hemoglobin C, okay, hemoglobin C on the other hand, yung glutamic mo napalitan ng lysine. So, compared to hemoglobin S, um, compared to um, um, hemoglobin S where the polymers done are long and thin, here, hemoglobin C are short and thick crystals, okay? So, meron kang hemoglobin C crystals. So, hemoglobin solubility test, this is negative. So, meaning to say it doesn't have turbidity. Okay? So, hemoglobin C disease. Okay? Hemoglobin C disease. Ayan. Kung makikita ninyo yung formation natin ng thick, ayan, yung mga, hemog yung mga RBC natin that are short, okay, but are thick. So, they, are, they have hemoglobin C crystals 
in them, inside them, okay? There is hemoglobin C crystals inside them. Again, that is hemoglobin C, position 6, glutamic, naging lysine, okay? Naging lysine. So, um, this is characterized generally by a mild spleno, um, splenomegaly and mild um, normocytic, normochromic anemia. So, mild lang si C. So, on the other hand, we also have your hemoglobin C Harlem, okay? Your hemoglobin C Harlem, also known as hemoglobin C Georgetown, okay? So, um, C Harlem and hemoglobin C Georgetown. So, you have a structural defect, okay? Both gluta um, um, structural defect natin is your 6, okay? Um, yung glutamic mo, okay? Yung glutamic mo napalitan ulit ng valine, okay? Double substitution ang meron sa C. Harlem. Glutamic, yung sa position 6 mo, naging glutamic and valine. And in position 70, at position 73, yung, um, yung asparginine mo, naging aspartic acid. Okay? So, again, double substitution for hemoglobin C. Harlem from glutamic to valine at position 6, naging, at uh, also from asparginine to aspartic acid as, at position 73. Okay? So, your um, your hemoglobin um, Harlem, okay, collectively, we call it, the hemoglobin here, we call it your, <clears throat> we call it your hemoglobin SC Harlem. So, this is a combination of your hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C. Okay? Hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C. So, <clears throat> So, makikita ninyo kanina, di ba, si hemoglobin C and hemoglobin S natin. So, hemoglobin C is actually um, positive to so, um, your solubility test. Bakit po siya positive? When I say positive, meaning to say it's insoluble. So, meaning to say meron siyang nagkaroon ka ng turbidity. And in this case, meron ka sa glutamic at saka sa glutamic at saka sa valine. Okay? glutamic at saka sa valine, kaya ka may positive result. So, uh, the disorder is called your hemoglobin SC Harlem because both your hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C are seen. Pero sir, is this uh, more severe than hemoglobin S? Mas severe pa din si hemoglobin S. Okay? Mas severe pa din si hemoglobin S. Let's go now to hemoglobin E. Hemoglobin E, anong problem natin kay hemoglobin E? Hemoglobin E is a structural defect. This time naman, um, there is a substitution at position 26. From glutamic acid, naging lysine siya. Okay? Kanina, okay, nung hemoglobin C, nasa, pareha sila ng hemoglobin C, di ba? Glutamic to lysine. Pero ito, since different position, iba rin siya. I hope nagigets niyo siya, no, na dahil iba yung position, kahit parehas yung substitution, iba yung disease. Okay? Kasi sa hemoglobin C, tignan nyo, Glutamic tsaka lysine din. Pero sa position 6. Unlike your hemoglobin E, sa 26 naman siya. Um, mutation at position 26, nagkaroon ng point mutation, glutamic naging lysine. Okay? Glutamic naging lysine. So, these are negative in your hemoglobin solubility test. So, you can see hemoglobin E disease or hemoglobin E trait depending on the, the if um, if this homozygous hemoglobin E disease kapag trait lang hemoglobin E um trait if it is just heterozygous and usually it's asymptomatic kapag hemoglobin E so patients with hemoglobin E disease are characterized with again mild anemia and mild splenomegaly we also have here your um, hemoglobin O Arab. Hemoglobin O Arab is a beta globin. Um, there's a mutation in your beta globin, specifically at position 121, whereby there's a um, replacement of your glutamic acid, naging lysine siya. Okay? 121 from glutamic, naging lysine siya. Okay? So... Moving forward, okay, this hemoglobin O Arab is also negative with your solubility test. And the disorder associated here is your hemoglobin O Arab disease. Okay, hemoglobin O Arab disease, again characterized with mild splenomegaly. Kung mapapansin ninyo, lahat mild lang except for hemoglobin S. Okay?
next we have here your hemoglobin D Punjab. Okay, your hemoglobin D Punjab is the structural defect. Um, again, a mutation in your beta globin chain at position 121 where there, where your glutamic acid was replaced by glutamine. Okay, your glutamic acid was replaced by your glutamine. So, solubility tests, these are negative. Okay, and this is uh, the disorder associated here is your hemoglobin D disease. Okay, hemoglobin D disease. Last but not the least, we also have here your hemoglobin G and G Philadelphia. Okay, here the problem is now not on the beta but on the alpha. Okay, there is a structural defect on your alpha globin chain, specifically on position 68, whereby your asparginine, okay, your asparginine was replaced with your lysine, okay? Asparginine was replaced with your lysine at position 68. So there is a negative um, solubility test for this one. And the disorder, okay, the disorder that is associated here is your hemoglobin G disease. Again, characterized with a mild hemolytic anemia and mild splenomegaly. Okay, so kung mapapansin ninyo, once again, everything are just mild except for hemoglobin S. Okay? Other hemoglobin variants, we have the following. Your hemoglobin, ayan, we have other hemoglobin variants. Sir, do we have to memorize this? No. Just the one that are, that are discussed specifically. Okay? So all of these are examples of, ayan, substitution. We have deletion. Your gun hill, pakikitandaan na lang si gun hill. That is an example of deletion. Your hemoglobin constant spring is a extend, chain extension. And kung mapapansin ninyo, chain extension siya. Okay? So, again, um, to sum it up, we have different hemoglobins that we did talk about. Hemoglobin S, C, C, Harlem, E, O, Arab, D, Punjab. In G. All of this you need to remember, specifically the point mutation that had happened. Anong position, anong amino acid yung naipalit. Okay? So eventually, um, we are going to differentiate them. Kung mapapansin ninyo, hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C, Har S, C, Harlem lang ang positive sa solubility test. The rest are um, negative. Okay? The rest are negative. And of course, remember their electrophoretic pattern. And not only that, remember your sideroblastic anemia, your porphyria, and how I differentiated your hemoglobinopathies and your thalassemia. With that, okay, with that, thank you so much for listening. So hopefully you did learn something today. And if you have any questions, we will now proceed with the discussion with the question and answer portion. So again, thank you so much for listening. This has been Sir Joms. And thank you for listening. So I'll see you guys on our live um, question and answer portion. See you there.